They also studied the way gay and straight people talk. Hi, I like Marvel Comics. Sounds straight to me. And is straight. Hi, I like DC Comics. Gay. Hey everybody, this is Birch. Um, a lot of uh, comics and movies and other things are trying to promote. I, I, you know, I, I don't want to start the the video with like uh, the, the comics are trying to promote diversity. I, nobody wants to hear that, or I, I don't know. Do you want to hear that? I, I don't think anybody wants to hear that. Anyway, here's his mail. You'll understand why I started this way. It says, uh, "Hey Birch, what do you think it would take to get a female superhero to be really popular in comics?" DC has had Wonder Woman forever, but let's all face it, if we're being honest, even in her most celebrated runs with some of the top talent in all of comics, Wonder Woman has been a B character in terms of sales. It's never been the number one title. Her events have always underperformed. At the end of the day, things always go up to Batman with Superman as the backup and occasional appearances in the top 10 by Green Lantern or Flash. Wonder Woman is always the backup. Even when she had an amazing movie that many people liked, it still felt like a supporting character to Batman. Over in Marvel, it's actually much worse. There has never been a popular female superhero that has actually moved a lot of comics. Everybody goes back to Captain America, the X-Men, emphasis on men, the Avengers, when men were running it, and other male superheroes. Now, despite now, despite how this mail sounds, I do not hate the idea of women superheroes. I actually would love to have a popular female-led comic. The problem is, is it even possible? Marvel has been trying with Captain Marvel, Miss Marvel, She-Hulk, Black, Black, Black Widow. Really? Have they been trying with Black Widow? I mean, just, just to be honest. Anyway, um, Black Widow. And some YouTubers claim that you really can't have more than one woman in a superhero comic or movie for every five men. What do you think? Is it just not possible? Um, and some other stuff that's not, not relevant. Um, so, uh, first off, let me just say the, the idea of like percentage equations for how many women to men should be in a movie or comic is, is, uh, I think that's absurd. Um, I also think that once you go down that track, you've kind of given up on the idea of like, we're going to tell a good comic story. And now you're into some other weird way of creating comics that, that you know, seems to ignore the fact that you need a good story. Um, but to the question at hand, um, you know, first of all, is it possible? Sure, it's possible. You know, it definitely can be done. I think there's a couple traps that uh, comic publishers fall into when it comes to women in particular in comics. And the first is the subverting expectations trope that seems to get applied to women constantly in comics. Um, and for that matter, in movies and a lot of other things too. There's this idea in the back of uh, the writer's heads, the producer's heads, I don't know, that says that, hey, if a woman can defeat the bad guy, nobody will see that coming. Meaning, you know, like if, if you know, the heroes are all in trouble, and Captain Marvel comes in and just beats the crap out of it. It's like, oh, wow, a woman is doing this. Or if you think about the Avengers movie, it's like uh, suddenly all the women find themselves in the same place at one moment. And the women have to team up and have a badass you know, woman moment. Um, and But in the minds of the writers, they're like, nobody will see this coming. This is subverting that kind of male-dominated superhero genre. But the problem with that thinking is in order to subvert expectations, there has to be expectations in the first place. And there are not. When it comes to this, uh, you know, powerful uh, female characters, you, you know, you, they, they've been doing this, this trick for decades now. And so if, if you expect the reader or the viewer or whatever it happens to be to be like, holy shit, look at this, a woman's beating everybody up. Like now, actually, they've, they've, we've had countless movies and comics now where the woman is is billed, written, claimed. The other heroes are saying so. They're all patting her on the back like, you're the most strongest of us all and the one with the most heart and most intelligence. The problem is they lay it on too thick. And when you do that over and over and over, it no longer becomes a surprise. So you take that part of storytelling off the table. 
I'm not saying, you know, women should never win. I'm just saying they shouldn't win, you know, consistently all the time. Because when you do that, it, it no longer feels unique or authentic. And so what happens is people look for unique, unauthentic. And that's why you have, uh, you know, frankly, you have uh, people clamoring for, you know, I just like to see the dudes show up and do things. When they had uh, Laura Kinney take over for Wolverine, and, the, you know, you could have just done that, and everybody knew Wolverine was going to come back to life because Christ who doesn't in comics. But um, when you had that moment, it was an opportunity to tell a pretty interesting story of somebody kind of trying to emerge from the shadow of a legendary superhero, somebody who was arguably the most popular or one of the most popular Marvel characters for 40 years. And so, you, you know, you could, you could play with that. As a writer, you could do things like, you know, she's uh, trying to rise her way up in, in, uh, in her competence and her ability. She hasn't had the training or all the years or, you know, any of those other things that a lot of the other superheroes have or Wolverine has had. And, uh, and her upbringing was in a lab, so she doesn't have the same kind of empathy. And that was baked into the character. You know, before they made her Wolverine, um, they were, you know, they were playing with that. She was, you know, rough around the edges. She was having trouble relating to humans. She was all this kind of stuff was going on with X-23. She didn't even have really a name. And, uh, and when she became Wolverine, suddenly it was, well, we're going to throw in her costume that looks similar to the, uh, to the, the Wolverine that's been popular for, for 30, 40 years. And the writers and everybody else is going to come on and start uh, bleeding. That's the real Wolverine. This is the real Wolverine. This is actually the real Wolverine. And, and it, it felt as authentic as nothing. And so if there was that opportunity to tell that story of a hero kind of climbing the mountain, going on the classic hero's journey, getting knocked down, getting back up again, making it a Chumbawamba song, like if, if you had that opportunity in the comic, you squandered it because you immediately jumped to, this is the actual better Wolverine. And then you have Wolverine himself show up like, you're really the Wolverine, not, not me. And then you have people online being unsufferable about it. And so as soon as you do that, people naturally, readers, not women haters, but, but readers go, well, you know, this, this, I, I reject it. You can't tell me what to do. I don't want to, you know, be told that this is the, you know, that what I've been reading for 40 years is invalid. And suddenly I have to like this character even more. I mean, that character earned his place. Wolverine was not popular out the gate. His popularity came for a long time. He was, uh, he was popular in comics for more than 10 years before you got an, a, you know, a series. You know, today, Marvel's like shooting people out in their own ongoing series before they even have a chance to, you know, to walk. But, but anyway, I use that as an example because that's the problem with a lot of female superheroes is there's this desire to not just, you know, have one, but it's got to be, you know, the most popular, the strongest, the smartest, the prettiest, except appearance doesn't matter hero of all time. And as soon as you do that, you, you, you know, you, you basically give up on the journey and the journey is what sells comics or movies or whatever it happens to be. Um, Wonder Woman is an interesting case because that character has been around for a long time and has enjoyed kind of modest popularity. But the other problem is I, I would say it's twofold is what I just mentioned in more recent years. It's like, well, Wonder Woman is actually the heart of them all. She's the strongest of them all. You went through that kind of uh, whole pitch leading through dark metal where it was like, we've, we've got to build her up. But one thing that DC hasn't done is they haven't put the superstar creative talent team on Wonder Woman. You know, Jeff Loeb and uh, Jim Lee got the Batman hush and you got Scott Snyder and uh, Jim Lee doing uh, the Superman bit. But you've had major artists and writers on these books. If you look at uh, Marvel, You've had Todd McFarlane on Spider-Man. You've had Jim Lee on the X-Men. You've had Rob Liefeld on New Mutants. You know, the Louis, reason why Louise Simonson, I think, is a legend is she has worked on legit big titles with big artists. And you had top talent. I mean, you had Louise Simonson and Walt Simonson on a book. You had Louise Simonson and Liefeld, I think, on a book. Did they work together? Actually, I'm not sure they did, come to think of it. But but anyway, my point is, you, you paired up Louise Simonson for many years with top artistic talent. Well, coming over to Wonder Woman, you haven't really done that. You put good people on it from time to time, people I like, but are you, you know, can you say with a straight face that you put the number one people in comics on that book? You know, when Greg Capullo was over at DC and was, you know, the hottest artist they had, 
did you put him on Wonder Woman? And the, and you, this dates back for, again, for decades. You know, John Byrne did a run on Wonder Woman, but this was well after his, uh, his start kind of cooled off and he was, uh, you know, he had run through a number of the other characters. This is probably the best attempt, I think, uh, for, you know, a major, major artist, somebody the company considered top talent going on that book. And if you're not going to put top talent on the book, then you're sending a message to your readers and your buyers, which is, yeah, this is a B book. I'm sorry to say it, but, you know, you look at Jeff Johns has done a run on Green Lantern, of course, and and The Flash, and, and you know, he was with the Justice League, and you see him doing kind of top books. And you see over in, um, you know, in Marvel, you see top writers going on these books. You know, Brian Michael Bendis was, you know, a big proponent of female characters. He, he put Riri Williams into Iron Man, um, you know, sidelining Tony Stark for a brief period of time. But when did they put Brian Michael Bendis on a major book that they want to put over? Why wasn't Bendis put on Captain Marvel? You might say, well, wait a minute. He was put on alias Jessica Jones. Yeah, as a street level hero that was under promoted. You know, when you had Mark Miller, why don't you put him on Wonder Woman? Why don't you put him on, you know, uh, She-Hulk? But, you know, you don't do that because the comic companies say, the publishers say, those are lower selling books. Those are B books. And so we want to put the top talent on the top books. You know, Greg Capullo is now over at Marvel. Is he doing Captain Marvel? Is he doing Miss Marvel? You know, is he doing White Widow? Um, what, you know, is he doing the uncancelable wasp? Is he doing any of those titles? No, they've got him on Wolverine. I, I'm just saying, you know, if you want these books to go over, you have to put top talent on it. And so as the publisher, when you tell people, Hey, we're not putting the top names, of the industry on our, uh, women books on our women superhero books. Um, but we're going to tell you these are the most popular characters and these are the most important things. We're just going to tell you that, but we're not actually going to put any dollars behind it. Well, then, you know, <laughs> words don't matter. And look, that is the, that is just a simple fact of where we are with women in comics. You know, female superheroes can be popular if they put top talent on there. You can't tell people. So the publishers tell you, but don't put the talent on there. They, they know exactly what they're doing. Nobody at Marvel or DC can look you in the face and say, this character is our number one priority. We stand behind it. It's really, really important. When the top talent in the industry doesn't get paid to go on those books, when they start doing that, then you will see these characters become popular. You know, there's the off chance, of course, that you know some unknown writer gets on there and tells an amazing story and it catches everybody's attention. It becomes a a very popular book and everything else. But can you say honestly with a straight face that if a writer like that came around or an artist came around that's just like the next Jim Lee and they were on, say, Wonder Woman doing an amazing job and people are, are just like, holy shit, have you seen this creative team? It's incredible. I, I'm just loving it. What do you think would happen to that creative team? How long do you think they would be allowed to stay on that title? The second that that you know, a writer or an artist gets popular, they would move them to a higher selling, higher profile book. And they would put some B-list people on the B-list superhero. That's, that's just a fact. Now, as a reader, by the way, you may say, but that's my most favorite hero. I love Wonder Woman more than anybody else. I love, you know, I love Miss Marvel as my favorite book. That's fine. As a reader, you can, of course, like whatever you want. But even if you're the biggest diehard Captain Marvel fan... It, it, it isn't the highest selling. It's not in the top 10. It doesn't move books. So, you know, I, I'm glad you like the character, but that doesn't change the fact where the character sits, both in the eyes of the publisher and in sales. Sorry to say. Anyway, what do you think? Am I off base? Let me know in the comments below. And thanks for listening. 